This is going to be the first channel update in a while that I'm going to have scripted. Main reason is because I want to get to every point I wish to address, and if I'm allowed to drone on in a completely impromptu way, I'm going to fail to address things and only find out when it's too late. Plus, I don't really want to waste anyone's time with this video. It's especially important that I make this update count, as it contains an important message. I may even say a few controversial things on here, but... Hey, at least it's honest controversy. First thing I would like to address, for those who may not be aware, YouTube plans to make yet another big change to their platform, and it's really no surprise that it's rather suspicious and out of nowhere. The FTC and COPPA, or COPA, I don't know or care how to pronounce it, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. They're taking action on YouTube to ensure that audiences are divided into three main groups. Content that is safe for kids, content that is primarily for adults, and content that is a mix of the two. Here's the thing about this particular change. Every user that makes content needs to comply with this. If they don't, YouTube does it for you. And if you unintentionally abuse the first option, the FTC can take action. What kind of action? They don't really say, but I'm guessing it has something to do with removing your videos or even your account. When it comes to one aspect, I can see where they're coming from. A lot of kids use YouTube. A lot of kids have parental guidance streaming this platform, or there are some who even want a nice, innocent little romp through it. Over time, it's become harder to tell what content to trust and what not to. Hell, even adults have this problem on the site. It's become more difficult to count on what you think you're going to view. And when you take kids into account, it can be a problem. Now, I'm not going to act like all kids are little snowflakes that can't handle the explicit underbelly of sites like this. I was 12 years old when I first came to this site, and I watched pretty intense shit with no issue. But whether the issue affects certain people or not, you need to acknowledge when an issue is there. And that puts me on both sides of this change, in all honesty. The side of me that is pro this change is the fact that there does exist a group of children that need their safe spaces on the internet. A place where they have room to grow, to learn. If they are to get involved with more blatantly adult material later in their lives, let them come to that decision on their own. But it doesn't specifically mean dump all the filth of the world onto them. Pretty basic stuff, really. The FTC seems to care a lot about the children in this situation, at least I hope so, and it's commendable. However, how far does this go? That's the main question we need to ask ourselves. We don't know what effect this might have or whether or not it's going to be abused or handled poorly. Here's the thing. YouTube has a history of abuse and not caring. They gave us the right to make money. Oh wait, only if our advertisers like you and we deem you safe for work. They gave us the right to claim copyright if someone tries to steal our hard work. Oh wait, this can be used by anybody, including thieves themselves, and an automated system is included that claims and strikes videos that violate absolutely nothing. They include a system that deletes channels that repeatedly abuse the guidelines or copyright laws. Oh wait! This can happen to anyone who gets on YouTube's bad side. Clearly YouTube relies far too much on automated systems to do their bidding on the platform. To the point where it's hard to contact those who seem to care about the harm that befalls its users. It took Markiplier a user with an audience of 24 million, for YouTube to realize that hundreds of accounts got suspended for no good reason. It takes a loud voice to get YouTube to notice. But here's the issue with that. Simply put, millions of users on this site have quiet ones. Ones that don't matter. It's not entirely YouTube's fault that it's like this. The site grows daily at a rapid rate. Billions of users exist here. And there is only one main HQ for YouTube. Is this a problem? Of course it is. But can all the fault be placed onto the HQ? Well, no. But where there is an issue, there will always be people behind the scenes that don't seem to care. And it's become very apparent these past few years that there are such people running this site. YouTube has made responses to issues that plagued their site in the past and gave us really nothing to go off of. If anything, they have promoted things that harm the site even more, including the ability to flag any video or account people may deem harassment. YouTube favors the majority when it comes to the platform's overall contentment. If a majority of users are happy, then YouTube is happy. If a majority doesn't respond well to something, it becomes an issue. If there's an issue that is more detrimental to some than others, YouTube works to fix what the majority is facing. And the rest is just background noise. Many creators face losing money, losing rights, and losing their ability to create what they want, and are by default background noise because they fall under the automated systems and not the genuinely caring employees behind those YouTube desks. If lucky, they fall under the power of those who care very little. When you as a creator faces a problem on the site, you 
can't count on YouTube fixing it. No more than you can count on your favorite celebrity to show up at your doorstep. Now the question is, is it the fault of the platform in that case? Again, it's not a simple answer as yes. For one, outside parties can affect YouTube. MCNs, social media sites, and other platforms have been known to infect YouTube and help create the cesspool it's become. And yes, there exist plenty of users and creators of YouTube itself that helped create the problems it faces. There is a reason guidelines and system changes exist here, because they are problems that need fixing. We don't want to necessarily take away the copyright tools YouTube offers to us, because the risk of content theft is very prominent. It has happened to me various times, and to people I have gotten to know throughout my near five years on this channel. When it comes to YouTube, and really any large site with millions of users tuning in, it's a very many outweigh the few mentality, as we discussed earlier. Besides the poor handling and abuse of these tools, YouTube recognizes a threat when they see one. The threat simply needs to be big enough. When many users face theft with making videos, YouTube has to take action, right? But each and every individual user is a different situation, and there isn't a system for each one. The only thing they can really do is create a system for us all that encapsulates the main issue. It's how I imagine trying to catch a swarm of gnats in your bedroom with a jar. You're not going to get each and every gnat into that jar. You can only minimize the swarm, taking care of the bigger issue that users who abuse the system threaten the platform with. They do acknowledge a problem. What they don't acknowledge, or don't seem to, is not all the damage can be repaired, and that in their quick efforts to contain the damage, other forms of it can arise. The very unfortunate and rather sad re reality of YouTube is, they're going to continue to grow. And the more they do, the more damage arises. The more YouTube takes risks to contain it, the more users will suffer. Now, how do we fix this? We really can't. Have we been graced by YouTube fixing the problems that occurred on their site before? Of course we have. But it's never going to be the perfect place where everyone can upload, browse, and stream safely. Simply because it's become very much like its own world. And a world is susceptible to danger. If a small part of our world faces a struggle, and the entirety of the rest of the world takes action in order to put it to an end, conflict will arise, as they all scramble to do what they individually see fit to fix it. And after the smoke clears and the blood has been shed, they will finally come to an agreement that makes everyone only slightly happy. It's put into effect under the assumption that all will be well. Until the society begins to grow, new problems arise, abuse of the compromise takes place, and war breaks out all over again. YouTube works in very much the same way, and because of that, we can never be fully content on this platform. Does it necessarily mean that all hope is lost here? I can't speak for everyone concerning that. There are people more affected by this platform than others. Certain people gave up on this damn site and moved on. They were fed up because YouTube continued to rape their channels until they fully submitted, and rather than give in, they decided to not be a victim anymore and left them to rot. I am honestly pretty fortunate to be where I stand on this site, and there are those more fortunate than me. Our situations are very different, and we will react to this new change come 2020 according to which position we're in. And I understand this, and I support people's decisions to leave, to stay, to rebel against the system, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. You have a right to do what you do regarding YouTube. But now I'm speaking for myself. Thing is, I have nowhere officially to go. That's the thing. And while others could give me alternatives, it doesn't really change that. Allow me to explain. Let's use a platform that is currently being held up as a solution to all the problems YouTube has presented. This year's medal goes to BitChute. I appreciate what they are doing. I have even made a channel there and plan to keep it running and promote it to my fans on other platforms. We need to see more video platforms grow. YouTube currently holds the crown as a video streaming and creating site. It knows this. And everyone else knows this. So much so that it's become the primary focus in the library of video sites. To the point where sites like BitChute are seen as dull, not very promising, doesn't have much to offer, cheaply made. But the honest truth is I want to see other video platforms grow. Not just to stick it to YouTube, but to grow this genre of websites in the eyes of the internet using public. We need to expand in our efforts to create, and what better way to do that than to continue making platform after platform, and to spotlight those platforms. Disney, for example, is a marketing giant in the media. It owns almost everything. But at the same time, they are not the only media company to exist. We all know this. We have ventured outside of Disney numerous times, and found great things to cherish. So, 
Why should we let the popularity of YouTube decide when all is said and done for our content online? BitChute has a right to grow as a platform as much as any others do. It all comes down to how effective their growth is. But this isn't a surefire solution. I hate to break it to you. Remember what we discussed earlier? It's the reality on the internet that a growing platform means a growing number of problems. YouTube doesn't monitor every problem. It monitors what it can. It focuses on the majority of its billions of users. And this can affect any site. It affected Facebook's security, Twitter's favoritism, Google's ability to archive all our information. A bigger space means a larger danger zone. A terrorist attack is most likely to happen in a large gathering than a small meetup at your friend's house. A storm affects what is in the eye more than what is on the edge. YouTube is in the eye of this storm. It has remained for years one of the top three reigning platforms on the internet. BitChute is on the edge of this storm. But let's say it was to grow bigger. And bigger. And bigger. As you can see, it's touching the eye. The worst of the storm has found its way to the spot. Or did the spot find its way to the worst? And like I said before, the blame cannot be placed entirely on the site. We can only really blame it for the ineffectiveness its ability to stop all the damage from being created, but rather the ability to contain the worst of it. And that is a problem we'll sadly always face on the internet altogether. And this very much applies to any aspect of life, really. We climb the ladders, we make it to the top, and in the meantime, we're just building up more risk. If you get fired from a very strong position of power, it affects you exponentially more than if you are in a weak one. In any large position of power you may find yourself in, you have much to gain and much to lose. Size, unfortunately, does matter in life. But it doesn't necessarily mean hope is lost. It just means we need to carefully pick our choices and weigh out what is the better option. And if the choice is too difficult to make, give it time. Take it on different angles. Search for other options. Because life is about taking risks. We could lose any day. We could die any day. Our lives are temporary, we are not invulnerable or invincible, and we are not guaranteed forever. But we still try, and we still have lots to show for it. It's important to think about what we have, and how grateful we should be for what we do, because none of us have nothing. Now, I know this may seem like I'm defending YouTube's actions, trying to shift the blame away from them, or convincing you that any alternative is stupid, and you should all just listen to me. Honestly, you could take my word as anything that you want. As long as you know where your stance is, and you stand proud in that stance. This stance is mine, and I'm pretty confident. Let me know your thoughts too. Mine aren't the only ones that matter at all. Because, as I said, everyone's situation is different. Just don't make any rash and non-thorough actions based on your views. It gets no one anywhere. As for BitChute, you can find me there. I'm linking my account in, in the description for you guys. Do I encourage each and every one of you to jump ship and that all of you are doomed lest you join this site immediately? Obviously not. But one thing I do encourage is you try out this site. I want to see people I support there, people that support me there, because BitChute makes a promise to put its users first. The very idea of that is something that I respect. It is not the winning circle by any means, but it's a nice reprieve from the befalling of YouTube's constant chaos. How long will BitChute last? I can't really give you a straight answer. Two years ago, Vimy was the saving grace of YouTubers everywhere, and it was destroyed in a matter of weeks. There were users who lost everything because they ditched YouTube completely for Vimy. It's not as easy as, this will make things better for you and this other thing will not. Black and white mentalities hurt platforms further, and it's good to have a gray view of the internet and a gray view of the world. As dull as it is, it's better than one blank color. So I guess the remaining question is, what will you do? It's a question I am asking myself as well. The only answer I can really give is, I'm going to be wherever I'm wanted. Because my audience means a lot to me. I love making content for them, and I don't want them to have to lose me. And I wish the same for others. I'm willing to let time determine if I leave, stay, or go adrift into a limbo between the two choices. As of right now, all I truly want is to continue to create, because it's what I enjoy and it's what you enjoy. The platform is really irrelevant. If conditions here become so bad to the point where I lose my audience to another platform, I will move primarily there for my viewers. I certainly don't want to force people away from YouTube, that isn't the solution, remember? I believe the system I have right now works best for me, 
and I will change it if I need to. You can find me on here. You can find me on BitChute. You can find me on all the social media handles down in my description. Thank you guys for listening to what I have to say on this matter, and stay your awesome selves always.